I'm Tom Handel with a CTN member highlight, and today I am with Bazia, who uh, and we're here to talk about Bright Future, which is an ongoing club at Portland High School that Bazia started four years ago as part of Project Bazia. So, just to get started with, um, could you tell us who's in Bright Future and what it's about? Uh, Bright Future, since we started like four years ago, we are focused with the kids in our school after the program after the school. One of the things we'll focus how they can be succeed in a high school and even to the level of the college. That was the big concern. And, and the name even came out was one of the boys uh, of Brundy was one of the student, uh, Ben. And they, were, they used to have a brother, we we'll call them twins. The, the one came out was that the name and we'll start continuing. And, and can anyone in Portland High School join this club, or is it specifically for uh, No, for everybody. Even we have kids from uh, South America, we used to have kids from uh, uh, Russia. So uh, it's, it's mostly focused on uh, yeah, people who are new to this new country. New in this country. The, the purpose, very important, uh, is how to educate them to understand American system. And the other a hard part of it is, I know the system requests you know, they have to go to college. But sometimes them language it doesn't help them to get to college, because back in the day the United States used to do different things like African, where if you don't pass the class you don't go to the next class. But right now they're working by the age, so this is one of the things I raise this concern. This will create the debt in the United States system, especially in the education part. We're bringing multicultural from different background, and then we respect them by age to go help up, up. In the end of that they will start, they will get loan, and they can't continue. So one of the reasons we start focus of bring other job like the bank, saving bank came out of the uh, different Korea that we came and talked to them. Now the first year, mm -hmm. first year you started with a scouting project in conjunction with the Cumberland County Sheriff's Office. What was that about? Uh, that was about how to, to engage those kids to the system of to the law. And one of the things that was up in north and it's a new community of all that white community. Even when the kids went there, it was the white kids was like they never met, and it was really more interesting. The face they would take two of them or th uh, three of them was brought together to be in that program. So they learned how to understand the law, to understand the system, and they get uniform. They they can be willing to work in the traffic. So it was a good skill to have them there. Yes, yeah, so they got a taste of what it was like to be a law, in the law enforcement, law enforcement career. Yeah. Were any of them encouraged to be, then become, you know, pursue that as a career? Yeah, that's a career. One of them, Ben, is already right now is uh, in college and he's going to pursue his career in the law enforcement. That's what he's doing, and that's that from where we just uh, encourage him to to get them involved in American society, because really the truth is America is built in multicultural. Um, now, that was the first year, and yeah. you started to talk about, like, in the second year, you started to get more into employment and careers with uh, Norway Savings Bank. How did that go? Uh, the first thing was very important how to react them to the bank and to understand how the bank accept uh, people. One of the things we started with the interview. In the United States, uh, when you talk with somebody, you need to make sure your eyes is connected to them. If you start looking down, in African culture, it's just like more respect. But in American society, they will look at you, you're lying. So we did through the bank to teach them, when you go to the interview, you need to be dressed for fashion, you need to shake hands good, you need to make sure when you talk to the person, look at him eyes, because when you look down, they think you're lying, you're not saying what you're saying. Right. And that was right. the hard part to, to teach those students in high school to be able to understand when you came to the job, there's a process of how you, you, you go to the interview and how you shake hands and how to connect your eyes with the other people. So that's what's our first thing, we train them and then we encourage them because they have different language. We have a lot of students have five, six language. So Haley, Ningala, Arabic. So we look at it, bank is a good position for them. They can have a job from the high school to the, to the bank. That's great. Yeah, that's the one thing we, 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 we're pushing for that and, and some a lot of kids now they're interested to be in the bank. But also those interview skills are good for any kind of any kind interview of here. That's really important for people to identify the cultural difference. I can yeah. see looking down, it, I could see how that might be a sign of respect somewhere else. That's right. But here it looks like you're shy or afraid or something like that. That's, that's really great. Yeah. And I know that in the third year, 
I was somewhat involved because a, a group of students came here to learn how to use video equipment and get involved with television. You want to talk a little bit about why you did that? Yeah, that's one of the reasons we did it about the hijab because it's the face of Muslim in this country and uh, there's a lot of stuff, but we just pick one uh, Pacific hijab, why the young lady be, became half hijab in, in, in Islamic uh, face. And one of the things, we, we use that two way to do it, to train some student to be in CTA, to be knowing how to do the video, but we put hijabi can be example, because they're coming from background of Islamic face, and it was really more interest, and even after the CTA done that, when we try to give that video to the, to the different community, because to understand why Muslims have hijab for the young girl. Yeah, and that was, it was a really uh, amazing of to have that, and even we encourage other community to know our American Pacific or other community to know why a young girl in, in a Muslim community you will have hijab. And it really was more impact of to have that. I was really, really happy to work on that yeah. because I've never heard anybody, uh, especially female Muslims, talk about why wearing a hijab is so important to them. And it just, there were so many different reasons and these young women, they were so enthusiastic about talking about yeah. their own their own faith and faith. their own uh, you know, ideas about so. that, that it was really, and, and so you've seen, have you seen a difference from the different places that that those the videos have been uh, shown? Really, this video make a lot of impact, even we put it online, we put it on our website, and then we, I believe we, we asked for five or six copies to give to other community, and they was more happy to feel this young girl did something to show people why they have hijab in the first place. And because sometimes you see somebody, like sometimes people ask them, oh, did you sleep with that? You know, it's kind of a weird question, but you know. Yeah. And they be polite to ask them, no, just for my face, but when I sleep or when I'm taking a shower, I can't have it. But you know, in some cases they would ask them sometimes. It's kind of a funny question, but they never take it like person. And we get a chance to explain to them, do not feel bad when somebody asks you. Because sometimes in the United States, some question kind of weird, but that's the way it go, but just don't take it person, in other words. Yeah, yeah, it's important not to yeah. take any of these things personally. People yeah. just, they speak out of, we, we speak out of ignorance, right. but, you know, there's a reason for it. And once we understand, right. especially face to face, it right. helps a lot. So w what is the future of Bright Future? What, what, where, when, do you, when does the group meet and what are the things that you're looking forward uh, to? Do? We do all the time between uh, 2, 2.45, we start until 4.30 or 4.20. It's like between one hour and one hour and a half. Uh, well, through this, like I said, we, we teach them how to be a good citizen in the United States and how to succeed. And even we out last year, uh, uh, Costco Bay Bridge. Uh, we take them to that uh, bridge welding machine. Now we have more than three students already have a job there. Wow. Yeah, uh, it's amazing. like $20 to start. So one of the things, go back to what, what I was talking about, uh, the college. I'm not against the college, but some of those kids, they don't have a skill to get to college. That's why I create the system and I wish in this interview if anybody in the government and legislation you have to listen to what I just say it's very important we can help these kids to do other career before they go to college and then later on they can go to college because college is open you're 10 year you're 100 year you can go to college but don't engage and tell them you have to in the beginning and we know a lot of your kids come in in a big different background it's a big cultural shift. I mean, right. we're all, a lot of us grow up thinking, we, you know, right after high school, college, yeah. right after school, high school, but college. But it's not. Now you're going to get along, get to college, and it's stuck, and then they get upset in the system, and I almost tell them, I'll make a joke to them, and say, government is not the building, it's the people. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know? Well, that sounds like a great project, and it, it sounds like some of the things that people learn, even if they're not coming from another country, are helpful to learn, job learning skills, and, you know, ex expressing themselves. That's, that's, good. that's all great that you're doing so yeah we're doing even we'll try next year we're gonna be in there and we just keep in connect with them maybe in this year we'll have other date off because this one in high school we're doing Monday we're hoping to do in dealing on Wednesday oh great. great so to be the same school and at the same time we will try to to connect them to meet one uh, uh, a month maybe for breakfast ourselves because we almost take them to dinner to other because right now if you realize sometime in uh, in the United States you don't see migrant a lot in in Dina or other sometimes it's a bearing of the language we, we encourage that too and they're like waitress we try to encourage them because if they have a job like waitress they'll be able to be associated with right. American well that's great it's a great program that you're doing and mm -hmm. I appreciate it thanks for yeah. coming in no problem thank you see you all the time